My name is Tehran, and in my immigrant jam, I would put dates. I don't know why that was the first thing that I thought of, but dates. Here we are back at Immigrant Jam uh, West Coast headquarters for another LA edition of this podcast featuring the one and only Tehran. Your energy is amazing. Like, Thank honestly, you. your energy you, is amazing you're like, too. You're wearing this, I don't know, is this lavender? Would this be considered <laughs> lavender? Because it's like amber is the color of your energy. You are the embodiment <laughs> of that persona. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll yeah, take it. I'll take it. I thing. love it. But your energy is amazing too. I always admire people that feel very centered and you feel very centered. See, I I always feel like I'm like, ah, I'm all over the place. So I'm always like, ah, oh, damn, I, I, I love to be like, Centered. What and, is centered? I and, well, it feels like you're like you're like living in an equilibrium right now. You know. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. centered. You oh, do. That's a new one. That's a new adjective on my ad. Like people, <laughs> I've had other adjectives thrown my way. You know, okay. like um, like cocky or Funky. you know like. Or fun or fuck boy, but now <laughs> I'm centered. Like I, I'm, I like this direction that I'm going. Like a centered fuck boy. Yeah, that's a first. That's really, you know, that's, that's a whole new genre. It's a whole of genre of fuck boy. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I appreciate that, and I accept this in my life. All right, I love you know? that. Cool. Yeah. I love that for us. For us. I love that for us. Yeah. yeah. So you're from DC. Right? I am from DC. And um, your mother is Persian. Or your no, father's no, no. Persian. So my father's Persian. Yeah. And my mother's black. Yeah. <sighs> and there's so much more to it, right? So like my okay. father's like Persian, like he's from Iran. He's an immigrant, came to this country. My mother's black. Her mother is a, my, her grandfather is American black. Okay. And then her mother uh, is a Nubian Egyptian Jew, wow. which is akin to a lot of the, Mizrahi, or as a lot of common people think Sephardi, but that's not the appropriate term, or like a Yemenite Jew or like yeah. a darker Jew. And so, and, and then you also see Ethiopian Jews falling into that category, of course, being so close to the Red Sea. I don't even know why anyone questions them being Jewish, but that's the thing. So it's like you're talking about some of the most original of original Jews. So did you grow up Jewish? You know, it's so interesting. Everyone asks me, like, my religion or my religious background, considering that my father is Persian, his family is Muslim and Zoroastrian, and my mother is black, and I just went over that. My grandfather was Baptist. My grandmother uh, is still is Jewish. Um, so many people ask me what religion I grew up or what religion I am, and so few people have ever asked me if I'm a good person. <laughs> like, I've never, not one time, like, on a date or anything. By the way, the dates that I threw in the immigrant jam were actually dates, like actual like dates girls, that I go on. Women? Oh, just okay. not even when just dates you go on, just <laughs> blend that in. So, the idea of it, wasn't it is the dried fruit. It was a double entendre, <laughs> honestly, it. to be very fair. <laughs> the the idea of it is yes, I grew up with a lot of Jewish traditions simply because to be very fair, that's the grandparent that was at the home when I was there the most. So each one of my siblings, we all speak different languages and wow. the languages that we're strongest in or speak the most fluent in general are the ones depending on on the grandparents. So the the languages in my home are well, I wish English was a language that was spoken in my home, but it was like <laughs> like the last language spoken in the home. Okay. So it was Farsi, Arabic, Hebrew, French, and English. Wow. So we all speak these languages to a specific considerable degree, but just depends on which grandparent was there. Most available at the time. Exactly. That's <laughs> really that. what it, it comes down to. And it's so interesting because people will always assume we all have the same uh, the same accreditation in the languages or the culture we're familiar and it's not that's not the case that's wild yeah and it's very funny to watch people meet us and then be like oh but I thought it's like no 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 <laughs> they grew up in France they have, they have <laughs> they, they're in France like they and then they came home that kind of thing happens to us a lot of times that's great so yeah. which which one did you get you so so the... I got the Persian Arabic Jew okay right so I'm <laughs> like those are where I'm at my French is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, my Hebrew comme si, comme is the ça. worst. Comme si, comme ça. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> my Hebrew is the worst, okay. even though it started off the best. Wow. But Arabic is good? Arabic is good. And Farsi is good? Uh, Farsi is excellent. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild. And, so and read and write them 
you know, read and write. But and when I say All that, so, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. To the to the degrees that I need to, yeah, yeah, for sure. And so your grandparents made sure of that, mm. because that that's not that common. A lot of times, especially immigrants, they leave that behind, right? And they and they want to like just take on that new identity of being American, and they leave all the languages behind. They don't teach their children. Yeah, so. yeah, that. That wasn't the case in my home. My home, see, so when it came to my parents, my grandparents, they were just very, like, they didn't care about these things. But then when I was born, all of a sudden, everyone cared about every little thing that they were, and I had to know everything. Huh. And cool. on one... Lucky you. I mean, lucky me, but, yeah. yo, this shit sucks. Like, I just... <laughs> As you know a kid, what I'm saying? Mean- like, I don't need to be circumcised again i'm good you know what i'm saying like how like you have a bris you have a like you have all these things that happen yeah and you have to just learn and know and and correlate them without it being specifically common knowledge so the average person might not see the correlation between for example christianity and being persian a lot of people don't realize the three wise men that visited jesus on his birth are three persian priests Mm. the average person just doesn't know that Mm -hmm. and yet if you are from these backgrounds and you read it and you're like oh wait it's mad that's just a persian oh wait it is that how come no one knows this Mm -hmm. it's like yeah Mm -hmm. because they don't talk people Mm -hmm. just don't talk amongst themselves (laughs) that's true but it's like it's funny because being german you know a lot of people um think Hitler's German and Beethoven's uh, Austrian and, and it's, it's the, the other, other way, way around, around. Yeah. you know they always attribute those two to, to the wrong country but so you grew up learning that from your parents but it seems like later in life you educated yourself more on it right it seems like you really know what you're talking about sure being autodidactic is one of the one of the points but it's also part of my self-discovery more so than anything right it's like And I combined it with an academic background of it because I have double undergrad degrees in international politics and communications, a master in economics, a law degree, blah, blah, blah. I saw that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. My credit score is amazing. I'm also (laughs) a real six foot two and a half. Hold up. But who cares? Like, I'm single because I'm in L.A. Hold on. No, but. Are you a good person? That is a good question. (laughs) You said no one ever asked you that. That is a good question. I wanted to be the first. I hope so. Okay. Yeah. What makes a good person? That's the thing. I feel like it's leaving the world just a little bit better when you, after it, than you came in, you know? That that's makes true. you a good and person. And I saw your set the other night. I think that's what you're doing. I hope so. Because I, I wanted to to talk about this because you're a comedian and um, I watched you on stage and, you know, you, you're so funny and you're also a little, like, raunchy and dirty and stuff, but you really talk about some, like, real stuff and you really touch on like deep stuff and maybe you know like highbrow stuff you know what I mean what you could say like you know someone who 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 looks to put people into boxes would not expect that from a com comic who you know does like dirty material to then just take a, a, a left turn and start talking about what you were talking about being an immigrant and what that means and also you know the the gun problem in this country that you talked about the other night when I saw you and all that. Um, so is that something that you um, had to like, was that a process to get there to be able to talk about all that and be that person that apparently you are, you know, naturally or, or, or to allow yourself to talk about that stuff on stage? I think that's possibly the process of comedy, right? The truth behind comedy is that when you go on stage, even as a comedian, the first thing we do is remove the mic stand and put it behind us. And a lot of comedians just think, oh, it's to get it out of the way. But the truth is you're removing the metaphysical and actual physical wall between yourself and the audience. Hmm. And so that's just being as vulnerable and being as authentically myself as possible is really what I strive to do on and off stage. More importantly, with my comedy, I feel like I want to be the medicine that helps the sugar go down. Mm -hmm. I'm splashing them with, of course, the raunch and the fun. But as you said, we take that left turn and go to somewhere which is the actual acumen of what my comedy is about, what I'm trying to actually press upon people without being preachy, but really just reaching, like reaching people and talk about things like unity, tolerance, Mm. and all the isms and below. Like I really enjoy connecting with the audience on that level so while you're laughing you're kind of learning and if you and i'm not saying you're learning like the truth at least my truth right and my perspective right that's how my comedy feels i mean i appreciate the fact that you noticed that you know (laughs) 
Well, I think it was hard not to notice, right? Because it also falls out of line with, because, you know, it's very easy, I think, as a comedian, especially if you're funny and you get laughs to, you know, f- stick to your shtick, you know what I mean? Or do what what's funny, what gets the reaction, because there's always a moment where maybe, you know, it's scary to go to places that people would call intense or dark or whatever those words are that people put on on subjects that are real right Mm. um but uh but but you did study as you said political science and you have a law degree so you obviously care about learning and you obviously care about the world um aside from just entertaining people right so how did that happen for you how did you or or how did you make that transition or when, what was the point for you where you were like all right i i'm not going to go and sit in an office and and do it this way i i want to like be on stage i don't think i was ever going to go sit in an office you knew that? i wear a bathrobe you know like <laughs> but, but did but did you wear a bathrobe in college um since high school. Really? And so that's the, that, that's the <laughs> problem. It was, I've been problematic <laughs> since day one, right? Okay. So I've been problematic since day one. There's a bathrobe story. There's an origin story to the bathrobe, right? So, okay. so the idea behind the bathrobe is specifically, once again, indicative of who I am as a person, where we shouldn't judge books by their cover. Yeah. And that's ultimately the message that I would also always like to get across. And it's not something, it's, not that I found my way to do this. It's I found comedy to do this through. This was right. always going to be the point mm-hmm. of why I do comedy. Mm-hmm. The reason I do comedy is because as good com- good comedy makes you laugh, but great comedy makes you think. Right. And I always am a person who likes to think, right? Yeah. So even with the idea of sitting behind a desk probably was just never for me, clocking in and out just yeah. isn't the way I wanted to live my life. And fortunately, uh, I have through per- perseverance if nothing else because my my ambition far exceeds my talent uh, have been able to do so through comedy but you said um, you were problematic so does that oh, mean so problematic so does that mean toxics that- in my bio <laughs> <laughs> wait so does that mean that you you didn't you mean you didn't fit in is that what you mean by problematic or the opposite. I felt like, well, just given my background, there's nowhere that I just fit in, right? Mm-hmm. So I just made right. everywhere comfortable for me. Right. So, so you made everyone else fit in, fit in with you. Exactly. In a way. Yeah. Like, even if you, at the show, you see how I do that at the show. Like, we're all going to get in line. Like, it, <laughs> I don't know what you came here for, but this is what we're here for now. And yeah. then everyone falls in line with but that. But that's in the scary. Audience. How do you get the, did you always just, you were, it's just that just something you had that you were fearless like that because that's a scary thing to 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 be because you know a lot of people say just be yourself i think a lot of people are f- terrified of that because of course there is a moment where you don't know you know what that's gonna mean sure the world seeks to that's the you know the world is a vampire it's 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 trying to just take away your greatness at all times. It mm-hmm. tries to make you conform and color in the lines and mm-hmm. place you and make sure that you check a box and this and that but my very essence by nature is not this so i had no other choice but to fit in everywhere i went or i would never fit in anywhere at all Mm -hmm. and that's something that i feel i'm thankful for that it was more of a natural natural procession and progression for myself because i've seen it not be so for a lot of people Mm -hmm. and like you said being yourself is the hardest thing to do and it's because so many people are trying to be themselves rather than just being themselves right so i just (laughs) i just give into it as much as possible within reason you know so basically what you're in a way saying is because of your background you were set up to, because oh, yeah. there's no one like you, right? You're like a unicorn. I mean, have you met anybody with your background? Before? Well, I have siblings, so right, besides <laughs> like yourself, these but people. even your siblings, you said that yeah. you all speak different languages. We all speak even different. You and they all different. Do. None of them. Are, they're all so different. People you wouldn't even know. Like uh, my sisters are doctors. My yeah. uh, brothers own business. Like we're all so different. They're all like they're so quiet. It's so interesting. Yeah. But I feel the same concept is like I've never met someone like you. Right, that's true. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Of course, everybody's unique. No. I, absolutely. Um, but I do think, you know, there's something about 
I think, you know, a lot of immigrant kids or, or kids with immigrant parents or with that uh, experience in their background, sure. you know, have this feeling from early on that they're different because, you know, growing up, I don't know if you had this experience translating for your parents or, of course. you know. That's all I did. Right. Growing up, I still <laughs> yeah. literally do this. Me too. Like, yo, I'm like, <laughs> Bubba. Uh, why do I need to read? No, what is? I'm like, it's just a letter from Best Buy. It's like an advertisement. <laughs> yeah. Read it to me, <laughs> like, bro. It's an advertisement. Do you and need do a printer? They get mad when you don't know the word and the language. Like yeah. my parents would always get mad if I didn't know it in in German. I'm like, I'm like eight years old. Yeah. I don't know how to say tax rudimentary. Refund. You don't know how to say rudimentary. Yeah, exactly. You don't know how to say tax refund. What? I don't know how to say this. You know. Yeah, no, that's a real thing. But and that's a real thing. But I. But think- that's what makes you more unique. So this is what I mean by mixing. So it's easy to know that I'm mixed once you hear my background. But the truth is, for example, every immigrant child that comes to the United States is also mixed. Yeah. They also have a clash of the old and the new and the uh, West and the East or whatever their backgrounds are. There's that clash. And so they're just as mixed. It's just you can't tell it on the outside. And True. you see the progression within their culture and zeitgeist as well. So you see that mixed kids, immigrant kids who have an immigrant background who come to the United States, even though both their parents are from whatever country, let's say Romania, mm. they have My a mom. different perspective. I, I didn't just pick it out. I just have <laughs> Romanian features just to let you know. Yeah, my mom's yeah, Romanian. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you get that and you go, hey, look at how you are. And notice how they can make the same correlations between that world and this world. And mm-hmm. you were able to do that with the German and Romanian background with American and express how it's all so similar and understand the actual big differences and take almost the best of each one, mm-hmm. right? And so I just had even more of an infusion of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. No, I hear you. I mean, I think that's why it's so um, sad when people, you know, this like anti-immigrant talk or sentiment, it's, it's in this country especially, it's like an artificial concept because especially like an artificial concept that's introduced by you know, the Trump people or whatever, because this country literally is all immigrants. You know, it's not like in Europe where there's like, you know, people who are like fucking sixth generation French, although that doesn't really exist either. It does. No, no, no. There, here. It does for sure. It goes back like even the thousand years that was created. I mean, sure. And you're absolutely right. The only people who should tell you to go back to your country in this country are uh, first ge- first nation people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like uh, original Americans yeah. should look at me and be like, <laughs> yeah. Yo. go back to your, we should build a wall around you, Jim. You <laughs> yeah. know, like yeah. build a wall around you, right? So in, yeah. in Europe, it's a little different because you do have people that are authentically, right. ethnically French. They are French. They are Irish. They are Scottish. They are, right. uh, they are German. Yeah. And there's a different sentimentality uh. to it. And you see that with the new era of immigrants that go to, for example, a country like Sweden, which thought they were very open and warm and receiving. And then once they had people who weren't Swedish for 10 years, they changed their minds quick. Yes. So what do you like identify as when people ask you, what are you? Because for me, it's very, I I ask that not because I want to put you in a a box, but for me, it's always difficult when people ask me because I'm not really, I don't really feel super American, but I grew up here, you know, and I like, nice customer service and shit you know yeah, and you but have I'm a New not York German accent. you have a New York accent, accent. <laughs> yeah, but so. I'm not really German and I'm not I don't speak Romanian but I grew up with a Romanian grandmother so you know and like you know the food I know the food I know the culture everything my mom is a singer she sings Romanian songs so it's it's hard you know I don't I a lot of times I don't know what to say um, and maybe it's like I'm like national identity fluid Hmm? That's a new one. That's a. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Um, what do you feel, or how, or do you identify as anything? Yes and no. I yeah. don't know. That's right. not a question that, like, I have an easy time answering. Right. People always like, oh, do you feel more Persian or more black? And I'm like, I never really thought about it in those terms. I just feel like the most me. Mm-hmm. You know? But so when you were growing up, kids in school and stuff like that, did you grow up in a diverse school? Did you go to a diverse school? So thankfully, I'm from Washington, D.C., which is right. extremely diverse yeah. So and very educated. So I didn't grow up, which I may it may have affected me so much more if I had grown up in an Alabama or an <laughs> Iowa or even a Los Angeles, which because of its its size and area and it's extremely segregated so los angeles for example sure a lot of small cities are segregated as well we do this like new york is extremely segregated 
and even when the places are gentrified, you understand that gentrification is just an onset of of segregation, right? Yeah, absolutely. But it's so small that even if you live in Crown Heights, is which, by the way, they invented, they invent Jews. They literally <laughs> take Jews and they invent them and they have like this manufacturing plant and just chops them up. You have no choice but at in the two blocks, you're going to connect with a black person because they live two blocks away. Yep. The black neighborhood is two blocks away from where you are. So even though you are clearly in a very homogenous neighborhood of, of Judaism in Crown Heights, once you get that two blocks, you're right there. Yep. Right. So yeah. that's the difference on the East Coast versus the West Coast. But in the West Coast, if I say East L.A., you know, I mean Latinx. If I say Compton, you know, I mean black. If I say Glendale, it's Armenian or mm -hmm. Koreatown or Beverly Hills is, is Persian. You know, there's easy ways to do that. And it's very spread out mm -hmm. where a person in Beverly Hills and this happens all the time. I'll meet Persian kids from Beverly Hills who have a Persian accent. OK, so they're like, hey, what's up? What's your name? <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're Persian. I'm Persian. I'm like, oh, do you speak Farsi? They're like, no. Why would you think I speak Farsi? <laughs> and it's just they have the accent without having the language background That's because wild. they're just so in their neighborhood neighborhood you know right, yeah. so it's very different I think my background I would have grown up very differently had I grown up in LA versus Washington DC which is even smaller than the tightness of New York and it's just a lot of different people all in the same place of that salad slash melting pot of yeah. America that is supposed to represent. You know? <laughs> I love it's a salad of America. I like yeah, that. Yeah, because you can definitely pick out the <laughs> lettuce and the tomatoes and the the, uh, the onions and avocados. Like, you know where, it's not like it's yeah. melted together yet, but it's kind of blended with the little dressing we throw on. I love that. Uh. I love that. Do you think that you have a different personality in the different languages you speak? Do I code switch per language that I speak. <laughs> is that the translation of what I, I just said? It is, okay. it is. I do not know if I specifically code switch. However, there are different cultural nuances right. which do apply, which add to, adds to a confusion when I speak. And so I would say I don't code switch and I'll tell you why, because I speak English with very Persian mannerisms mm -hmm. and I speak Farsi with very like almost hip-hop mannerisms <laughs> okay. so it's like i'm a lot of these things you know what's a persian mannerism in english a what persian you say? so for example when someone says something to me mm -hmm. and i mean no i'll go which is just like the way persians say no That's or middle Greeks eastern say exactly no. it's a very mediterranean uh, old school yeah. way of saying no you just yeah and it's a nooch yeah, yeah, okay yeah, it's yeah, a nooch yeah. like, and sometimes they just go like this yeah, exactly. You don't even nooch. You I just dated go to... a Greek guy, and I, it took me like a year to figure yeah. it out. I'd be like, you they want it or eyebrows. you don't want no. it? They raised the, the eyebrows. eyebrows. That's, yeah, exactly. that's the no. I never knew they do that. that now, that's a Persian thing, it's too. A, it's, well, that's, I mean, once again, you're going right, to this area. old world where every, like when you say, when Persians and Greeks think they're so different, yeah, I yeah, just yeah. want to be like, take a 23 and me. <laughs> yeah, okay? that's so true. Because, you know, mm -hmm. when you start reading those history books, who were the ones fighting primarily? Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be the most mad if I was Macedonian and no one yeah. just knows me now. Like, wait, <laughs> whoa, 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 you know? North Macedonia is what the country is now yeah, officially Now it's called. officially called North yeah. Macedonia because the yeah. rest of Macedonia, we don't even count. No, it's not Is even there a there. South Macedonia? No, it's Greece. No, no it's there's Greece. not. Greece says That's there's South saying. Macedonia, That's basically. what I'm saying. <laughs> like, why? Why are we doing this to ourselves, you know? Yeah. Like, why, why do Germans call it Deutschland? Everyone calls it something. And then we're like, Germany. Yeah. Like where did you where did you get German? Where did you get German? Where's the <laughs> yeah. word German? You know, where do we wow Germanic drive like where did they don't say they don't say that. No, they don't say yeah. that. That's true. I've That's always true. thought like Egypt is Masri everywhere Masr Masri. Ah. You know? And then we're like, mm, Egypt. <laughs> we're just like it's <laughs> Egypt. I, I get Egypt I get Egypt vibes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know true. how the names that's come funny. out of anything. Uh, so so no, you don't think that you you because I think I I think for me I think I do have somewhat of a different personality just because I'm always really fascinated by how the language says a lot about the mentality sure. of the people who speak it like I the agree. way the language is cons like constructed and you know the the way like German is very poetic but very heady and like you know like kind of weirdly constructed the verb comes at the end of the sentence and everything is kind of more difficult and Germans are very much that way, you know? I would disagree. I would say it's more precise. It's very precise. And they're very precise people. And that's exactly right. And 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 you're exactly right. And the language actually is 
you know, I do this whole joke about that breast, that, that nipples, nipple in German is breastwort, if you translate it literally. Sure. Brustwarze. And it's like, not the sexiest word, but they're so like, Precise. it's that and it's only that. You understand what you it know? is. Exactly. Have you ever been somewhere and then you're like, oh, look at Mitch McConnell over there. And of course, it's not Mitch McConnell, but it's a guy who kind of resembles Mitch McConnell. Yep. And you look over there and if I didn't point at the person, but you knew exactly who I meant, guess what that means? Then that person looks like Mitch McConnell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's just what it means. It, it is, it's not on purpose. If I say something and without being directed to what I said, you completely understood. Yeah. I understood breast wart. That actually yeah. is a great German description of yeah. what a nipple would be. Yeah, it's a breast wart. Yeah. Yeah, it's nothing else. Brilliant. Just that. Yeah, you it's can't brilliant. mistake it for, if you tell a doctor, look for the breast wart. They would understand like what part of it. It's cut the dick off. Brilliant. That's, <laughs> but that's what I mean. That's, I mean, it's a very precise. It is. Which is why blunt I think. language. Yes. Which is why I think it, you know, it, it lends itself to philosophy and to, you know, there's so many great writers. Types of philosophy, right? Types so, of philosophy. So sure, when you get the, the Nietzschean perspective, which yeah. is a cold perspective at yes. life. I would understand why that's extremely Germanic in yeah. nature. Yeah. Although the language can be very poetic, too, because it's so precise. You can paint very precisely poetic pictures and you can play with words in a very interesting way. And sure. this is something that a lot of people don't know about German because they think it sounds ugly, you know, because of the CH sounds and the ch and all that. I think that has a lot to do with I, I think that has a lot to do with um, the Nazis. The, no, just the just the marketing, right? So, like, <laughs> why do you think German sounds... There was a time where if you spoke German, you were the educated one, right? Yes, so then, after a couple world wars, people were like, ah, oh, Germans, oh, it sounds, oh, look, each nine stocking blocking, <laughs> oh, look at them. <laughs> it just sounds like kill the Jews or yeah. whatever, you know, because they the marketing behind it is yeah. horrible. But when you look... When you look historically, it wasn't always such. That's true. You know? You're totally right. So is there, you speak Arabic and you speak Farsi perfectly, right? My Farsi's pretty perfect. Pretty perfect. Sure. Um, is there like one of the, is there one of the languages that you go to for certain, like to express your, when you want to express yourself in a certain way? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Farsi is the best language to express a feeling or in a concept so it's a conceptual uh -huh. language and i have this conversation with persians all the time so for example uh there is a, a a group of conservative persians who for example are fighting the pronoun thing with lgbtqia community okay. right yeah. so they're like oh it's he not she and she not and they're upset about it i'm like why in farsi we don't have pronouns we've always said they and farsi is one of the oldest languages still in use on the planet farsi hebrew we have um Tamil. Tamil. I couldn't think of that to save my sounds life right like now. I hate when I, yeah, it sounds like it's all over there. <laughs> so like, um, yeah. but they are, these languages, by the way, very, like Farsi has no pronouns. Yeah. So I can never say he or she. Yeah. You know, my, my father so has been calling my sisters he all the time. No, there's just no pronoun. There's no gender in the language. Okay. So there is no masculine feminine. There is no he or she. I could never be like, look at her. I can say, look at you. I can say, look at that person. Mm. I can say, look at them. But I cannot say, look at her in mm -hmm. Farsi at all. It is impossible. Ooh. I can say, look at that woman. I have to right. designate you a woman right. and express that. But that's not how I would commonly say it. You would never say that in general. You would be like, oh, it's hers, right? If yeah. it's someone's, you'd be like, oh, that's just hers. Mm. Yeah, I would never go, oh, it is that woman who's wearing the hats. I wouldn't. Yeah. Okay. But in Farsi, I would just be like, oh, it's theirs. Right. Simple. So when I hear Persian people fighting back against pronouns, I'm like, why do you care? <laughs> like, you don't use pronouns in your language now. <laughs> what are you so upset about? And what do they say? Yeah. Why they, do they care? It, like, honestly, they have no answer. Yeah, they don't, never they don't had one even person. know themselves. Yeah, they're like, well, yeah. I learned English. I'm like, you're upset <laughs> that you spent all this time learning pronouns and now they want to take them away from you? That's what you're really just upset about. Well, I always, I, I think I did it um, last Thursday at the Laugh Factory. My dad still doesn't speak English well. And I always say he's the OG woke man because he's been calling everybody they for 30 years. He Let them live. They go to the store, they walks in, they said, my mom would always sit there and go, he, she, people don't know who, what you're talking about. That's not true. Everybody knows. Yeah. Everybody understands. They understood what he was saying. Yeah, 100%. Nobody was confused. Same night you were at the Laugh Factory, yeah. comedians were in the, in the lobby 
They were having an, a, a, an argument, conversation, as comedians often do. Mm-hmm. Probably hating on something great. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> they were having a conversation, and as, I'm, as I hear them, someone, one of the comedians, who people like kind of dismiss a little, said something and used, a, used an incorrect word improperly. And so instead of understanding his point, what they did was they jumped on the word. They were like, that's not even a word. That's, you're so dumb. That's not even a real word. That word. And it's like, yeah, that word. You made that word up. That word's made up. And as I walked by, I simply looked and I said, all words are made up. And I walked away. And they were like, yo. And they were like, you know you fucked with our minds for like two days. Like all words are made up. Like every word we and use is made up. You were wearing the bathrobe and floating the, I, off I, the... I, 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 I glide. I glide <laughs> yeah, when I walk. And I glide. I just glide out. I just walk through and I was like, all words are made up. All words are made up. It's like, true. What are you... What are you arguing? Like you understood, if you understood the colloquial use of the word that they were using, why do you care? Yeah. Why do you care? Like it's really that. That's how language works. As Shakespeare said, nothing is good or bad, only our thinking makes it so. I like that so much. That is true. And yes, we quote Shakespeare on this podcast. You should. Okay. Everyone quotes Shakespeare. A lot of the words we have, the words we use. Uh, Made up by him. What are the words words that Shakespeare made up? Yeah, look up a word that Shakespeare made up. There's a whole list. There's a lot of words that we use today. Shakespeare, Shakespeare is... Definitely, I mean... Crumpet bugger. I love Shakespeare. Do you yeah, bite your thumb at beach. me? I love do you bite your thumb. Beach, blushing, accused, amazing. Beach, blushing, beach? accused. Wait, hold up. Beach. The word beach? Beached. 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 Oh, like yeah. a beached whale. Yeah, yeah. That's great. That's good. Caked, cater, cold-blooded. Yo, so oh. every time a rapper says I'm caked up, it's from Shakespeare. <laughs> because a lot of people say, oh, if you're the son or the daughter or the kid of an immigrant, you know, you like inherently work harder because they're always in your ear. You know, look what I gave up to for you. You know, look at all the stuff that you have and that I didn't have. Um, is that something that... Well, yeah, that's always you? in the back of my mind because my father gave up a lot of things, uh, especially with the Iranian Revolution, in order to be here. My father walked all the way from Iran and carried me in his stomach for 19 months before he gave birth to me in the United States so that I would do two things, <laughs> clean my room and become a doctor. I did neither. you know. So I, I'm just the disappointment. So when I text him things like, Happy Father's Day, he's like, are you a doctor? No? Then it's just Father's Day, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? So so that's just how that goes, you know? Wow, he carried you for 19 months. 19 huh? months, yeah, in his stomach. He walked barefoot. He only had five $1 bills in his pocket. But borrowed, let his friend, uh, let his friend Bobak borrow three. So he came here with two dollars. Bobak never paid him back, of course. And so he walked. So it's like the hard knock story, you know. <laughs> That's how I, I think being an immigrant. A lot of people feel feel like immigrants. Oh, immigrants work harder, or immigrants are like they're smarter, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I think it's literally just a natural onset of having to know two things instead of just one. Yeah. So if you go to Europe, totally. most people speak at least two languages. Yes. It's very rare that someone in Europe speaks one singular language. Mm-hmm. It's not the common it's not the common at all and the reason being of course because you're in such close proximity to other nations that have their own languages. So you'll have someone that speaks French, Spanish and of course English with their British accent. Very common <laughs> yeah, to do exactly. so. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Luka yeah. Doncic showed that when they recently had a game in Mexico and he spoke in per- he spoke perfect Spanish, mm. you know, yeah. he spoke perfect Spanish. And then the American players were like, yeah, we just want to say uh, shout ass. out to <laughs> <laughs> Mexico. Uh, hola, hola. Uh, uh, de donde biblioteca. I want a de donde biblioteca. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's how I think that has a lot to do with it. Immigrant guilt. Okay, which is compounded, you know, depending on where you throw, you sprinkle in a lot of Jewish guilt. Yeah, that's where they actually get guilt because you know it's so guilt is such a big part that chocolate candy is guilt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So you have guilt, uh-huh. guilt, 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 <laughs> and then you uh, you just tend to have to work harder. You know, you have no choice. I guess so. I guess so. I think so. I mean, you know, it's a joke uh, and a stereotype, but there is something to it. You know what I'm saying? Because you do think about like. You know, my parents did all this and 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 what am I living up to? Right. Or like, how am I or I think also just but what you say exactly. It's like because you grow up having to translate, you grow up starting to work when you're six, basically. You know what I mean? You're trans well, you're translating for your parents. You're doing all this. No, no, I thought you started so late. (laughs) I was like, Wow, your parents were so open minded and liberal. They were just so very generous. (laughs) Wow, six? Oh my gosh. (laughs) 
<laughs> like at one, they were like, you walk now, mow the grass. <laughs> like, wait, yeah, what? Exactly. I'm one. Uh, but also, and you grow up with, I think, more, because a lot of times, Immigrant parents leave where they leave be- for political reasons. Sure. So a lot of times political reasons. With an awareness. Hardships. Yeah, of that. You know what I mean? You're not as maybe guarded as other kids um, that don't have that in their background. You know, where like when I was growing up, I heard about East Germany. My mom was in prison there and my grandparents in Romania were blacklisted by the you know, second communist regime that took over after the first communist regime, you know, and they were part of that and then they were blacklisted and then they were bought out of the country and, you know, like all this, like... I completely know because if I asked my father, he actually was there in prison carrying me in his stomach in in the East German jail somehow. (laughs) I was like, why? Because when I was walking, I took the wrong way. (laughs) Like, what? Like, it's never, it's never like, yo, you know, we just left, we got on a plane, we came here. It's never, it's never, it's like I was smuggled up a mule's ass. (laughs) And as they brought me over here, (laughs) you know, it's, it's always that story. I would say that it also glints to the type of immigrant that not only able to, but also is willing to leave and successfully go. True. And this isn't, there's a huge difference, especially when you're coming over this overseas, it's even more difficult than it is to just move from like Iran to Turkey. Mm-hmm. It's like you're going to a country where you don't speak the language. Mm-hmm. In the case of Farsi, Arabic, uh, or, or Arabic, you're reading, or Hebrew, you're reading the different direction, completely different letters, mm-hmm. you know? It's not the same. And that type of mentality lends itself to a type of person to begin with. So. We have a very affluent, educated Nigerian population in the United States that doesn't get enough credit mm-hmm. for being so. But why? Because also the the Nigerian person that was able to make sure to move here mm-hmm. was also a specific type. And you see that in, with the Jewish population uh, during World War II, a lot of Jewish people, sure, they were factory workers and then, of course, atrocious events. But they also came here with the mentality of nothing will ever let we won't ever let something stop us again Mm -hmm. like we we cannot let that happen let's be educated let's be let's be united let's have communities let's Mm -hmm. stick together let's be much stronger and that's a that's a beautiful sentiment that we should all learn from Mm -hmm. and that's also something that i think a lot of times people talk about like inherited trauma but they don't we talk, always do. Yeah. But they don't talk about inherited strengths. Yeah. Inherited you know strengths. Mean? But we do what we don't realize it. It happens all the time when someone says, uh, yeah, because I'm Jewish or because I'm Persian right. or because I'm Indian or because I'm this. Right. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people don't understand in the black community mm-hmm. is that when when with inherited trauma and strengths in the black community, a lot of those strengths are new strengths that have just been mm. developed because there was so much going against the black community in the United States, so much so that when you go to a place like Canada, Canadians will often ask you, oh, you're black? Where's your family from? And you're like, United States. They're like, no, 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 but where? Because mm. they think Jamaica, mm-hmm. you know, they think Jamaica, mm-hmm. Kenya, something. They're right. looking for a specific answer. Right. And with black America, that history of slavery cuts that off completely. Right. And so you're cut off from those particular roots. Right. And it makes it makes a difference. It really does cuz you'll see that people who are black but have a specific country ethnic country of origin will then again also revert, well I'm Nigerian, I'm South African, I'm Jamaican, I'm Haitian, mm-hmm. I'm whatever that is. Yeah. And that's a thing that we don't talk about because it's very uncomfortable for people to talk about. But I will talk about in my comedy. Yeah. No, and and I mean I think that it should also be talked about a lot more that there should be reparations, right? Like that's something I think that, you know, if you talk about Jews and and, and saying we'll never be, you know, stopped again, in a way, the fact that there was reparations in Germany and that Germany, you know, and Germany still has a lot of problems with like Nazis and neo-Nazis and, and you know, hate against Jews and anti-Semitism, but Germany was forced to in one way or another really like have a reckoning right there's uh there's statues and memorials everywhere in the country everywhere you look museums there's their reparations were and are paid you know it's not a ton but it's something right there's there's a an effort right to and i think that 
does something for the Jews as well to strengthen them and to to be able to say, all right, so uh, that because it's recognized mm. by the by the main country that did this to us, it like gives us a stronger foundation to build on. I think, and I think that's something that you know isn't talked about enough for black Americans here that the denial of that is like hurting the um, the the uh, ability to uh, not move on but like be strong and, and but to really, go on to go on exactly or sure. to emerge you know to like finally yeah, the try denial to emerge of it, you know I feel like I should get uh, reparations like every time I go to buy cotton products they should just be like discounted <laughs> for you because you're black like I feel like that would go a long way but I also <laughs> think that I, I completely appreciate that point of view I would say that by far Germany has not done enough. No, I agree. And not in the right way. It's almost to the point where they resent it, right? So That's I true. feel like there's there's a way, but I don't feel bad for the victimizers ever. So no. it's like you need to deal with it yourself. That's not our problem for you to deal with. In America with Black America, I feel that one of the things that needs to be acknowledged is the effects of mm -hmm. slavery. And so we have this concept of critical race theory, mm -hmm. which is... I don't think enough people have actually researched what critical race mm -hmm. theory is. So being people are re so ready to attack it. Mm -hmm. And I often, and there's flaws for sure, like any academic train of thought. However, whenever I hear there was this one parent who was going off in a Virginia legislation, how like my kid feels like he's a slave owner and all these things. I was like, you do realize that critical race theory always, always also talks about the abolitionists at the time. So the fact that your kid relates more to the slave owner than the abolitionist has a lot to do with your kid and you. Yeah. Your kid could easily also feel like they were an abolitionist at the time yeah. and not feel together. And they could easily be like, oh, wow, you know, we were on the right side of history. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah. It's like, yo, then that has something. You need to figure that one out, buddy. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. It's very, I mean, it's just interesting, but we don't know how to fix it. We're just doing our best as we go. But it's not that people don't want to fix it. It's that there are some people who don't want to fix it. And there are people who would fix it but just don't want to go out of their way i get it there's just so much you know there is so much That's i agree why I wear and, bathrobes. I, and, I, <laughs> and i agree with you that germany hasn't done enough but i think that it's you know there is a, a start you there's know what something I'm saying? and and yeah exactly it's something and at least like you're not allowed to do the fucking sure. hitler salute but what's in the germany. german legal population of jews right now are oh i can tell you what is i it? think it's um I think it's like 200,000. Ah, let's go for yeah, that. Ari, very, what do you feel like low. it is? Population of Jews currently in Germany. In 2018, 116,000. Right. 116,000. Yeah. Of course. Who the fuck is going to want to be in Germany? Yeah, actually, that's way higher than I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah, what I'm no, saying? Like, you know I why I was thinking this was way like, higher? Somewhere around it's there. It's because there's only like 15 million to begin with. I know. So whenever you see 100,000, then you're like, wait, why? That's such an interesting And we have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey. I think that's always such an hey, interesting Avi, misconception um, that people are like, people don't know that number. They don't. They don't know that in total in the U.S. It's what, 2 million in the U.S.? On a good day? Jews? Yeah, exactly. Because they see New York and L.A. and they think there's yeah, Jews Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. There's you know definitely more than 2 million in in the U.S., but still. I think it's around 2 no, million. No, no, no. I'm going to go with there's about 5 million in, in New York. And there's about... A, there, 5 million? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In New York City? There, only recently did Israel surpass New York in the um, number of Jews. Really? That's a real thing. Israel has Our, 8 million, doesn't 7. it? 7.6. 7.6 million. See, right. I was about that life. All right. <laughs> but there used to be, in New York used to have more, there used to yeah. be more Jews in New York than, than there were Israel. in Israel. Right. And it only just recently tied and slowly surpassed. And by the way, by uh, surpassed, I mean like by uh, 500,000. But the Jews are what, 2% of the world population? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're looking Jewish? at like 1%. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And this is something that people don't know. I think people, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, they think they're- Pick on them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pick on, look at that. The... Pick on these people. There's only 2% of the and world. I'm going to say this. I'm going to give into the conspiracy that Jews run everything in the world. <laughs> Shouldn't you admire a group of so, <laughs> so little people? Uh, just like we should all learn. We should be learning from this. <laughs> from the, like what? What did they do, Jim? Let's do that. You know? Yeah, that's like true. I'm just saying. Like if that if this is true, if I'm saying all the conspiracies are true, all of them. Fine. Mm. 
take note. If I learn, if yeah. I saw a guy look, when Shaquille O'Neal dunks, I'm like, yo, whatever. But if I watch Steph Curry dunk, I'm going to be like, yo, we're the same height. How did he do it? I could do that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or if I was tall, if I saw someone who was 5'5 five, five dunk, I'd be like, yo, what do you do? What What is your <laughs> leg regimen, bro? Like, I can do this too, right? Yeah. So I feel like instead of pointing fingers, we should be shaking hands. And more importantly, we should, uh, instead of always looking for, like you see the world, right? And so many people are so willing to change the world and so few people are simply willing to change themselves. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, we should all just think about it. And, and I'm saying this in terms of when it comes to privilege, entitlement, whatever it is, whatever you think of the world, like, oh man, I wish someone would do th something about that. Look in the mirror, mm -hmm. you're someone. You could do something about that. Let's make this happen. You're someone you could, and that's the best part about mirrors is mirrors are not simply for reflection. They're also for correction. When you look in a mirror and you see your collar's crooked or your, your shirt stained or your shirt's untucked, you tuck in your shirt, you wipe off the stain, you, you straighten out your collar. You can reflect and correct. Uh, we can true. all do these things, all yeah. of us, and most importantly, together. Yeah, I agree. Except with for that. the whites. <laughs> we gotta, <laughs> like, <laughs> gotta get rid I mean, you had your shot, bro. <laughs> you had your shot, you know? You True. ruined it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they ruined it. I blame whites and I blame men. And if you're like a white man, oh, <laughs> old white guy, you're just, you got to be out of there. You got to get you gotta out go. of the way. You got to move. You, gotta, no. you had your time. Yeah. Um, was there ever a time where you, you didn't want to be the, um, where you wanted to be just a regular old American boy? Did you ever wish that? Were you ever like, I fucking hate that my parents don't speak English and I hate that I have to speak all these languages and I just want to be Chad. No, no, there's only one time. <laughs> You're like, no, I never. I've always to be loved Chad. being better. Like, I <laughs> love being like, oh, oh my God. Like, I loved it. Okay. <laughs> there's one time it's specific. It's like, it's, it's instrumental in the creation of my personality. I was maybe, I was four. I was in preschool kindergarten at this private school my mother used to pick me up all the time and my mother of course is darker so my at the, and at that time like in the 90s like people forget that like um in the 80s and 90s being mixed was new mm. like everyone thinks oh being mixed that's a very new thing is being mixed half black half white mm -hmm. i mean it was illegal until mm -hmm. uh, uh, until loving decision in 69 it was like actually illegal and there were there are stories and alex haley writes queen about uh, a black woman who can pass as white because they're mixed and all these things mm -hmm. so the drakes of the world hadn't come into being yet and it's not a it's not a it's not a coincidence that all of us are basically in the same age range, right? Mm -hmm. So my father came to pick me up on a specific day and the teachers, the workers at the school couldn't understand that that person, this like immigrant looking, you know, fair skin person, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the mustache and the accent is my father. They could not comprehend, put two and two together. And of course, like any good immigrant, my father's English sucks. So... <laughs> Just what, and then my father, and I remember for the first time feeling something I had never felt before. I felt what could be equated to guilt or shame or mm -hmm. embarrassment or something I'd never felt. And then my father just kind of pushed through and picked me up and grabbed me. And in that moment, I remember feeling so loved that I would just never doubt myself again. Like I would never feel those feelings. I just didn't like feeling that way. Like my father didn't care that I'm black or what or whatever. Yeah. You know, I was just a son. Yeah. He just, he didn't even think of it in those terms at that time. By the way, my father, like every Persian racist, but in this moment, <laughs> this was his Black Lives Matter moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yo, you know? But that's the thing is like, he's just, um, you know, it, it was just the feeling that made me feel such a sense of uh, fulfillment or completement that I never, ever looked back after that. Huh. And that was like, and, and thankfully it happened so young, you know? And of course, not all Persians are racist. I don't want anyone, right? I'm, I'm Persian. I'm not racist. It was like, okay. But your dad yeah, but had a family with a black woman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still racist? Yeah, yeah, but he's not Martin Luther King here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you said, of course, yeah, he's racist. My, uh, see, here's the thing. He's racist the way that any old world person right. has a racial connotation. He's not, like, more enlightened than the average person, uh -huh. you know? He's the same. Like, people are like, it's like, yo, let's be very real, okay? Two things. First of all, my dad came to school here. He was in college with my mom. They went to college. My mom's also attractive, you know? <laughs> it's not like, you know... 
all like even people in the KKK still think Halle Berry's hot. You know what I'm saying? Like they're still like, yo, I hate the blacks, but Halle Berry can get that uh-huh. dick. You know, like I'm burning this cross, but not for Halle Berry. Come on, have this barbecue. So it's like it's like my dad's the same way in the same way that most. When I say immigrants, anywhere where there's a homogenous population of right. people, you're always going to be a lot more self-centered on that group of people. Right. It's not; It doesn't always even have to do with race. Racism is more Western in the way that it's based on your skin color. Yeah. In a lot of countries, like in the Middle East, it's not really your skin color. It has to do with your cultural or ethnic right. background. Foreign. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're not if you're not Persian, you could be a dark Persian, light skinned Persian, Asian looking Persian uh, or greek looking mediterranean looking persian you're all yo you're persian that's not the problem yeah which xenophobia exactly Sanos means stranger exactly and yep. so that's the whole idea so it has a lot to do with the cultures rather than it has to do with the specific right. race it's ethnicity and culture over race so is my father like that sure in the typical manner that a lot of a lot of people from that part of the world would be no matter what part of the world they're from right wherever however he did marry and have children with a black woman you know <laughs> good and for the him. world is full of contradictions yeah, and it's just the way it works yeah out, and it's know? the way it is what would be your um your dream comedy wise and by the way let me throw wise. this caveat really quick yeah. my mom's also very racist let's not <laughs> act like let's not act like um, my mom's rosa parks here you know what i'm saying <laughs> i just want to make sure people understand that yeah, i just yeah, have yeah. a background of family that's just a normal family yeah you know no, and I think that that, you know, that's that's what I think that's what I really appreciate about seeing you on stage because that, you know, that's the same way that you talk you you joke but then you just speak very truthfully, right? And I think that always connects in one way or another, even if somebody doesn't agree or doesn't think that you know they think the same way but it connects because it's not about um it's not the print you're not talking about the principle of the matter you're not you're you're speaking about yourself and your experiences and and it's not about making that perfect or better than something else yeah i appreciate that um so what would be your your dream because you don't i mean maybe that's a stupid question i don't know and I don't know how I would answer it, but you don't seem like a per- I'm asking you because you don't seem like a person that's like, oh, I just want to have a fucking like a uh, sitcom. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like you may want that, but there may be something else like that has to do more also with bringing people together. What's my comedy dream? Or your dream, yeah. I just want to have a sitcom and then get <laughs> bitches. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I'm on TV, bitches. And then like. <laughs> I, it's interesting. So my my managers and my agent are always like, yo, just say you don't want to be famous, bro. Just like act like you don't. Because like on one hand, I just don't want this normal thing yeah. where it's like, oh, sitcom special. See, this. I knew that. Like, I just don't I want that. You. So they yeah. always get upset at me about stuff, especially when I turn th- things down. Yeah. They get upset. Actually, it just happened today. Then on the other side, but I want it done like on my terms with my idea yeah right so my idea my dream situation would be i would be adam sandler Mm -hmm. except i would you know you get to put your friends on and Mm -hmm. you get to do all Mm -hmm. but i would create content that actually has a purpose religious tolerance understanding uh you know yeah awareness of sexism racism anti-Semitism, Islamophobe, all these little things that we should have. I would have the same content that's extremely easily digestible, fun, but it has a purpose. Yeah. You know, if 50 First Dates was about understanding or awareness in the LGBTQIA community, I that would be, it. it'd be like, yo, 50 that's- 50 first, pro, first Pronouns. Exactly, like, but. exactly. <laughs> Something like in that nature, by the right. way, great title. So. <laughs> Very quick. So the idea of something in that nature yeah. would be, and and then again, I would also love to have that stand up career. You know, right. also it's, touring and all that, which I'm doing the live shows. Exactly, live show is my I, it's my I'm thing. With you. Yeah, because that is that's there's no unity like doing a live show. Exactly, and being in a room together and it's always different every that night. That energy and you feel it. Yeah, I love it. A hundred percent with you. A hundred percent. All right. Well, at the end of the podcast, mm. I always do a little something that I call the poll questionnaire. You probably have heard of the Proust questionnaire, being the educated man that you are. <laughs> um, it's just a silly little questionnaire, and there's no wrong answers, obviously. Are you ready for it? 
Tehran? I, I, I think so. Okay. You, once you get Bruce questionnaire, I'm like, no. <laughs> a poll questionnaire? Let's go for All it. All right, let's go for All it. Right. Uh, in a movie about the Statue of Liberty, who would you cast as the Statue of Liberty? Meryl Streep. Nice. Okay. Uh, all right. If you could add one face to Mount Rushmore, who would you add? I would ha- have to add Barack Obama for the president. Okay. And Donald Trump. I feel like Trump. I, I just, <laughs> what? Yo, rem- hey, never forget. Oh. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> never forget. You understand? Like, do you understand that... Look, I don't even care about the politics. People love the politics. I don't care about the politics. Right wing, left wing, same bird. Okay. Uh-huh. Donald True. Trump was a president of the United States. That is a real thing that has happened yeah. in the history. Like in the future, children like bird. will learn the same way you learn. Mm-hmm. Remember George Washington and I yeah. cannot tell a lie. And you heard that story and Abraham Lincoln mm-hmm. and the beard and, and then like fighting civil war and slavery. Like we learned these things. Thomas Jefferson, who was like my yeah. favorite because he was like kind of like like now we understand he was possibly autistic. But at the time, they, he was like a weird, <laughs> intelligent person, like all these things. Donald Trump was the president of the United States true. of America. Mm-hmm. And if that doesn't tell you certain things like a democracy really works okay when you go to vote it works everyone's like oh voting's not real yeah it is no one wanted donald trump <laughs> and he won yeah. the people got their wish you know the well. politicians the people in power didn't they didn't want him but then they're like oh but we voted and they were like oh man we counted these votes but they didn't though the votes didn't add up uh, to Donald Trump's first presidency? I mean, I mean, I, that was because of how the system is constructed. Whoa, 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 that's the system. Votes. So here's the thing. Once again, we <laughs> never had a problem with that when it worked in your favor. And we didn't have a problem with that so. when it came to George Bush. We kind of let the Al Gore thing. Problem with it. We let the Al Gore thing. America I wasn't let, a citizen, but I had a problem. This is literally it. how the Al Gore thing went, okay? George Bush, and it's like, yeah, it was a tie, but, you know, we think uh, Bush won. And people were like, no, that's not fair. It's tied. And then people were like, nope. And they were like, okay. Sorry, Gore. And you never heard of Al Gore again. True. You never heard of Al Gore again. He didn't even run again. He made a Usually you're supposed to run again. He made yeah, and he was like, and he was like I, I invented the internet and I saved the planet. <laughs> and that was basically all we had to Al Gore, you know? It's true. I'm just saying. Okay, and I would add, I, I got to add Barack Obama and, and Donald the, Trump. And the Donald. Yeah. And then, of course, whoever the first female president is, mm-hmm. that should be an automatic ad. That okay. ad should get up there too. Great. Boom. I love it. Uh, if you could uh, deport one American person, who would you deport? <laughs> if I could deport one American person. <laughs> this is tough. It is. This Why? Because there's difficult. so many or because you wouldn't want to deport anyone? No, no, no. I'm deporting. Oh, okay. No, good. no, no. I'm all about, listen, um, actually, you know, a lot of immigrants are like for like easier access into the United States. Mm-hmm. I'm actually against it. Uh, I'm pro death penalty. I am... I am pro-death penalty, I'm pro-guns, I'm pro a lot of these things, but I'm also pro-choice. Anything to keep traffic <laughs> oh, down. Phew. How do we keep <laughs> traffic down? Yo, how how did it take me 12 minutes to go half a mile in L.A. today? Okay, we're going to have to, like, I think well, I think we're going to have to do something about this problem. Okay, we need to deport. I don't care who you are. I don't care. I don't care, white guy. You're gone. You're gone. Go back to go back to Germany. So okay? just the guy in front of you in the, traffic literally today? Literally, the guy in front of me in traffic <laughs> needs to go. And also, by the way, I just want to mention this. I Tyler let them Perry. over. <laughs> yeah, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> I let them over my lane like I was nice. I stopped so they could get over and they did not give me a head nod or acknowledgement. That's like the little up. hand acknowledgement. That's messed like up. you got to go. Yeah. You got to go. You're gone. Yeah. yeah. Find I just um, All right. if I had to deport someone, that's a very difficult question. If I had to deport one person. Yeah. I don't think I would deport anybody. OK. I don't think there would be a pro- I'm not like the pro deportation guy okay all right that's fine you don't have to deport yeah if you could um if you were president of the united states actually of we're getting rid of jennifer lawrence can we get rid of jennifer lawrence <laughs> that's the funniest jennifer lawrence ever. has got to go jennifer lawrence has got to go i used to love jennifer lawrence okay. i used to love her okay until she told that uh, hawaiian story to put his phone away oh no, no, i loved Haw- her until she put she told that journalist to live in the moment live and he the- couldn't speak english so he was like on google translate oh he was trying to translate yeah. i was I, the hawaiian story where he she was on graham norton or something in the uk and was like yeah and they had these rocks that were like holy to them and i scratched my butt with it and then 
<gasps> I had to get rid of Jennifer Lawrence. Had oh, to deport no. her to Hawaii. All right, have to perfect. deport her to Hawaii. I love it. I mean, that's kind of nice for her, but all right. Yeah. Um, if uh, you were president of the United States of America, uh, what American food would you ban? These are very difficult questions. By the way. <laughs> I know. These are know. difficult questions. I know, but you know, just stream of consciousness. If cheese, is I the would person, have to. I would have to. This. I. I would have to ban. Um, what is what is it called? Mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a much better answer than I was going to give. A lot of people hate mayonnaise, but I wasn't. I like mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is great on sandwiches. Yeah, I don't know why I people would hate mayonnaise. On sandwiches. If I had to ban one American food, I think I would have to ban. Um, I think I forget what it's called in in the the things that look like Lunchables, but they're not. Oh, those little those little things you get in the supermarket that have like a little ham, a little no, cheese, no, no, a no. The ones that they think are fancy, but it's just basically a lunchable. It's like a cracker with the cheese, and then they go to like these fancy dinner parties, and they'll have them. Oh, finger food? No, no. is um, it charcuterie? Is oh, that... charcuterie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta go. <laughs> All right, banned. back to France. It's against against the world. <laughs> is it French? Yeah, charcuterie. Oh. Um, who knew? It's a French word. I've only seen it in America. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I've only seen those yeah. that particular pate. It's like chicken parm only. is not an Italian dish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. That is how I, I feel. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. What's your favorite word in Arabic or Farsi? My favorite word in Arabic would have to be yalla. Uh-huh. Okay, which is just like hurry up, but yeah. I love yelling because it's like it, you can use it in so many different ways. You're like yeah. yalla, yalla, bye. You just yalla. Yeah. And then in Farsi, it would have to be June, which June. is like uh, my dear, my energy or whatever. It's a term of endearment, but we also just throw it away like, okay, hi, Lucy June. It's like, you know, love like it. that. Yeah. June. Okay. There's only two more questions. If you could add an amendment to the Constitution, what would you add? I would make everyone... Wow, this is so good. These questions are so good. <laughs> if I had to add an amendment to the Constitution, I would. How do you make people more educated? Like they have to be more educated. Yeah, they have to go to school. Yeah, because it's very interesting to me that communism is cool until the 12th grade, right? Socialism <laughs> is cool to 12th grade. Like no one pays for school to 12th grade. But once you want to go to college, all of a sudden you're you're a commie scum. <laughs> yeah. You got to pay. You want to learn more? You got to pay. So it would be amendment in regards to education. I love that. that. Yeah. Okay, most importantly, probably this question. I am German. I did tell you that. Um, so this might not come as a surprise. But do you know at all how I could possibly uh, meet David Hasselhoff? Yes. <laughs> you can just go to the Trader Joe's in Malibu. <laughs> yeah. He literally really? just walks around Malibu all the time. All right, I got to go. You can definitely meet David Hasselhoff. Okay, I'm going. Just w There's one Trader Joe's in, in Malibu? It's so funny. Actually, the party that I was thinking of, the char what is it called? Charcuterie? Yeah. Was at a David Hasselhoff type event. What? That is what do you mean that type was. Why event? do you think it was? His, he was there. He was at ah, this event. See, I caught. I, I felt like, the vibe. It, you must have because wow. all the questions are hard until this question. <laughs> like I have this one ready. Like I, I, like he's literally just walking around Malibu waiting to be recognized. Like I feel like wow, he okay. lives off that. Like that's you know how like vampires drink blood or whatever it is. You no, know, his solar panel is being recognized as David Hasselhoff. By Germans? Yeah, I, maybe. Yeah, probably. Specifically. By Germans. By German girls. Yeah. Just like. German, old, old German girls. Loves it. Uh, where can people find you on the social media? Honestly, you can find me on the social media uh, all across the board at I am Tehran. I am Tehran. Tehran, of course, like the capital of Iran. So if you don't know how to spell it, just watch Fox News. Literally talk about <laughs> Tehran every day. Every single day. Every single day they talk about Tehran. Somehow Tehran came up every single, like the abortion thing, Tehran. They brought up Tehran. I'm like, how is that even That's a thing? Wild. How are we connected to what's going on in Texas right now? Tehran. <laughs> like it was crazy. They yeah. bring it up every day. Good All for right. them. So, um, so you heard it here first. If you don't know how to spell that, watch Fox News. Follow, like, subscribe, check out Mr. Tehran and his amazingness. Uh, also, thank you for listening to this podcast. And thank you f to Melrose Studios and Ari. Ari Manis. Manis, who's so the much. Manis, obviously. He's hmm? the Manis. He's the Manis. No one likes mayonnaise, but everyone likes Manis. <laughs> That's right. This has been another amazing L.A. episode of Immigrant Jam. Be nice. Be kind. Be good. Peace, love, and hair grease.
If you liked what you just heard, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, recommend to all your friends, and if you hated it, recommend it to your enemies. Thank you for listening to Immigrant Jam, the podcast with me, Lucy Pohl. Have a delicious and nutritious day.